Well, it's the start to semester two, and here I am back on the 16th of July for your welcome and introduction. I think the semester starts on the first, but I think Canvas will open from next week. So let's see how this semester is going to go. I hope you're all feeling fine. Surviving the winter, it's been a bit chilly and pee, but we've had some lovely rains. Our dams are now 30% full from 17% a few months ago. So it's all looking good and spring is on its way. Um, hopefully the days will start getting a bit longer. It's still very hard to wake up before seven because it's still dark here in the Eastern Cape. I don't know what it's like in Cape Town. I think it's even darker there till eight o'clock. So I'm just gonna share my screen with you so we can get started with our welcome. If I can get the slideshow going. There we go. Right. Let's go to the first slide. Yes. Um, this is for THFS 702, your second semester course, and TFF, um, first additional language, FET 702. Welcome and introduction. I'm sure you all know me. If you don't, hi, I'm Marcel. Um, this is semester two, and you can see this is the first of August. Um Welcome, but if you want to listen to it before and get the Kahoot quiz out the way based on this introduction, you can do that as well. It's all up and running on week one links. Yes, yeah, so welcome back to a new semester. For those of you that are finishing up this year, this is your second semester, and I think you're going to find it a lot easier than last semester as well. So let's just remember to keep calm and enjoy our second semester. Um, most students actually really like semester two. It gets you, it's semester one is all the bumpy parts, I think, and you smooth into semester two quite nicely. So just a bit of my teaching journey. I think some of you all know that I'm from Eastern Cape, Abeja, um, Port Elizabeth, if you don't know that. And there is NMU, the university that I used to teach at right till 2014. Um, yes, at the sea, which is my favorite place. I'm about 500 meters from the beachfront, right at the bottom of South Africa. Um, and then in 1914, I left to go to the UAE to go and teach um, at two universities there. The first one being Skyline University College, which is an a MBA and Bachelor of Administration. We are taught in composition, advanced competition, academic literacies, and all those special things to Arabic students and um, international students. Then I left there for three years to go to high colleges of technology in Russell Khaimah. Um, I really enjoyed that. I taught at both the men's campus and the females campus. And then I left there at the end of 2019 to return to my special South Africa. And I joined PGCE for Stadio in 2020. And there you can see me at our first get together workshop that we had with all the lecturers, I think that you've come into contact with, um, our head of academics, um, the support staff, our executive dean there, Prof, Prof Pat Dean, um, all very, very special people. Yes, and we had meetings during the year, and the beginning of this year, we had a lovely workshop um, at the beautiful Centurion campus, where we all got together to try to make your lessons more exciting. Okay, um, so how are you feeling? Our minty question is coming up, and if you look at all these faces, they're all quite sad and anxious and um, disgusted and bored and worried. So um, we're going to have a little minty. It's only two um, answers you're going to have to fill in. Um, and that closes on the 8th of August. So you've got about seven days to tell me how you're feeling. And um, if you have a look at these characters, they are frustrated, they are scared, they are enraged, they are anxious, and they're suspicious. Um, not one of them looking very positive. So I'm hoping that not many of you are going to fall into these categories and that you're rather going to be in the happy and content and excited frame of mind. So there's your mentee, what it looks like. How are you feeling at the start of semester two? Into one word and into then another word. This is keep them single words. Um, otherwise, it gets a bit jammed up in the in the in the cloud as well. Okay, so just click on the link in week one. You'll see the mentee there quite clearly, and let me know how you're feeling. It's all anonymous, so I won't know it's you. So um, some things about me, what do you need to know that I'm Dr. Marcel Heron. I meet my lecturers also on, I'll show you now on the Canvas pages. So you can go and read up about me if you want to, go and Google me if you want to, you might find out some interesting things. Um, there's my, my place where I live. You'll always find me in my email box. Um, and I think I'm quite good at responding. So if anything's an issue, a problem, or to compliment me, you can just let me know there. So I'm an English teacher. I'm actually a geography teacher as well, but I've, I've been 
divided into this path and I really love it. So I'm just like any normal teacher, but as English teachers, we are way cooler than any other teacher as well. Learning is fun is another one of my mottos. So let's keep the classroom fun um, so that everyone's excited about coming to English. Um, those are the exciting things we do, the topical things we do, the relevant things we do, um, which all make us better citizens, workers, and future people in this world. So just a little reminder when sending me emails, because this is the most common media that you use to contact me. <clears throat> and please remember the first thing in your subject line, I'm sure you all know what a subject line now is in an email, please put your course code on TFF702 now or THF702 or THS702. First thing, don't have to put anything else and then you can start writing your email, but that's the best thing that I need to see. I teach different courses, three different courses, so it's good to see where you're coming from. This is an example, TFF702, SS1 submission. Um, just use your, your registered name. I think a lot of you got very cool names as well, which aren't your registered names, but those are the names that I know you by, and those are the names in Gradebook and where I go and look for you. So if you've given me another name, it's quite hard to find you um, because I often search using your initials. Oh, another thing is please use your study or email. I realize last semester, many students don't know they've got a study or email address. Please go and access it. And when you mail me officially, please use that email box. When I'm emailing you, I use that email box and then sometimes students don't get the emails and they wonder where the SOA comes from. It comes from your email box because that's what I use. Um, if you use your Canvas inbox, I don't I don't email you there. I mail you on your official Stardio email. So if you don't get anything from me in your Canvas inbox, please go to your Stardio email. And the other thing is when you're using your Canvas inbox, try and keep the thread going. So it's not a new message every time because I often need to use read the threads. The same goes for email to see what comes up. We've got about four or 500 students. So it's good to know what the context is of your email. Um, refer to your specific, your specific topics, your issues, dates, and so on. Don't just send me a blank email with a, maybe a recording on. I don't know why you're sending it to me. Um, I'm really not good at understanding single words or no words. You have to inform me about why you're sending that email to me. Otherwise, it becomes very frustrating. And I've got to go back to you and you've got to come back to me and I've got to go back to you and it's all the delays that happen in between. Yes, yeah, so it's an example. TFS 702, THF 702, assignment three mark they are worried about. There they address me. Good morning, Dr. Marcel. I'm sending this. I want to clarify my assignment three mark. And then there's a nice little salutation to finish it off with, saying goodbye to me. So it's nicely structured. Um, it's a professional type of email. It's showing that you are up and coming teachers and you're English students, but you know how to structure an email. So let's keep this in mind when we send emails. Okay, as was with semester one, hopefully you've all got your Ferreras now um, and you, your CAPS document will be uploaded onto Canvas. Um, you recommend reading is still clean with your strategies for teaching. Um, I really like this book, um, especially for assessment. They're going to come to towards the end of the semester. I think it's chapter 17 there. So there's your CAPS document. You can download that from Google as well. There's your Ferreira teaching language. And of course, the clean um, teaching strategies, which you can use for all your courses. So let's just quickly look at um, semester two. It's also, again, three units we're going to look at. So the first unit, yes, very exciting. We're going to look at language, grammar, structure, and use in the classroom. It's going to be a bit different. And our first assignment is based on contextualized grammar exercises, assessment you are going to set. If it's integrated and contextualized, you can't just say, change it to the past tense. You've got to say, if you change this verb to the past tense, how is it going to change the context of this script? So you've got to explain why you use a certain tense, why you insert a comma, why you take a comma out. So it's not just doing that, but it's explaining why and the effect of using inverted commas or using the past tense or using um, a negative word or a positive word or a euphemism. You've got to explain why you do that. But we'll get into this in week two as well, because that's the basis of your assignment one. Right, so the second semester we got onto writing. So the first one is grammar. Second second unit, <laughs> sorry, semester, semester two is all on writing. And we're taking a look at writing practices, focusing on the process approach and what that means. It's the planning, the drafting, the revising, the editing, and the composing processes we use when we write. 
And this is all to be with SS2. You're going to do another presentation workshop in which you're going to present to teachers of your FET or SP on how to use a process approach and what the benefits are of using this kind of approach for teaching, teaching an essay and a transactional piece of writing. Okay, quite exciting. And we're going to look at different kinds of genre activities from academic writing to creative writing to poetic writing and all kinds of genres from um, brochures to advertisements to all the things, um, emails that will be included in the transactional writing um, for paper three for both SP and FETs. The last one we're going to look at, the last section for which is unit three in semester two, is looking at critical language awareness. This is social discourse. It's how we label people when we speak. Um, it's how we contextualize people, how we other people, and how we embrace people in the type of language we use. And to be, but to be critical when we read this kind of language and when we actually use it and when we write it. So that's quite an exciting part because that comes also into language in context, your paper two for SP and your paper one for FETs. And how do we find suitable texts for criti critical language activities? Um, in, some, in SS1, you're going to have to look for a topical issue from 2023. And this is where you can start looking at critical language in texts and how we can use it. Right, so finally, we're going to look at our SS3, which is setting a exam. We're going to set for FETs, their paper one language in context. And we're going to set the paper three, which is the essay and transactional writing. And um, for SPs, it's going to be paper two and paper three. So you're actually going to set an exam with a memorandum as your final assessment. So let's look at distance learning model that you're all part of it in PGCE. If you're in your second semester, you know what it's all about. Um, this is how we deliver this program. It's distance learning. I'm sitting here in PE. You're sitting wherever you are in the world and we are having a lesson. Is that all clear? And do you understand what that means? So let's try and explain that a bit or unpack it. So what is distance learning? It's an online style of learning, yeah, which is not face-to-face. -face. Our classrooms don't look like that. Unfortunately, you can't just pop into my office um, and say, hi, Marcel, how can I do this? You have to send me an email. Um, some people WhatsApp me, but most of the time, it's going to have to be an email or some kind of query that you're going to have to get hold of me. Um, you're independent, you're not dependent on me and the class, you're dependent on Canvas and the work that's on there and doing the work yourself. So you've got to become online and you've got to become engaged yourself. It's all something that you're going to have to do. There are, <coughs> there are the buddy groups and I think they might help, um, but you can always come to me if you're having a problem. Um, you're going to rely on yourself, you're independently going to work, um, you're going to rely on Canvas, the online sessions weekly, you're going to go into Quick Clicks 1, 2, 3, 4, right up to 11, um, where you're going to get everything online every week. Announcements I've sent out, um, please take note of them and read them. They're quite important usually. And the emails that are sent out, especially if I'm notifying you of something, please read them and respond to them. Yes, and this is your Canvas portal where you're going to go and log in. Um, and from there, you can go to your different courses and each of the weeks, the information is there. Um, this has already been uploaded. This is um, your your landing page. It's your home page. Um, and yeah, you'll see the different things. You'll see the announcements. This is my view. It's a bit different to yours, but you'll also see going down the left are all the things that you can click on, your announcements, your assignments, your attendance. Um, I think you can also see online library, um, online sessions. I haven't put the... the um, student view here I will do that in my next lecture when I speak to you this next week on your first um, hand recording then there's about this module and um, the assessment um, templates are there and um, there's something about meeting me you're going to read up about me the key dates are all there and all the support and questions and answers that you can get there and this is if you go further down if you scroll further down on the canvas page you get all the quick links um, these are the quick links Going down, there's week one's quick links and the, the weeks you can see it's there and the different topics for each week, week one, two, three, all the dates. And um, you'll see here at week three, it's got a opens on the 15th. So if you're going to go and click on week three in the next three weeks, you're going to get nothing because it's going to say access denied because I haven't opened it yet. But you should be able to get access to weeks one and two. 
we also see that it highlights the, the dates. Um, I'm just checking the date. I think I must just move this one date down because it's in the it's actually the 22nd and the 24th for um for FETs and SPs, but I will check that as well. Right. And um, what does this mean for your two courses? The way we're restructuring it. Is that means you can have three delivery modes. You can have your panned recordings, which I'm going to do weekly. Then you can have your Zoom face-to-face. -face. There are only three of them, and there's going to be one industry expert that comes in on writing in the end of September. Um, the Zoom, what there's going to be three Zooms, and each Zoom I'm going to focus on an assignment. So in week two, I'm going to do an overview of SS1 as an online live session so you can ask questions. And then there'll also be a can recording on the integrated grammar teaching content for that week. I think it's in week six, I will do the presentation, SS2, and I think in week nine, it's for the exam writing. So I'll give you an overview of the assignment live so you can respond on Zoom. This will also be recorded. So if you can't get to it, you'll be able to hear the recording as well. Then, of course, you have your online trackers and tutorials. These extend the canned and the recorded sessions um, and you answer them. There's only five of them this semester. I think it's week one, week three, week six, and week nine that there are online trackers. But just keep your eye open for them. They will be inserted in the weekly links. So, yes, that's how we're going to greet each other through the screen, saying hi to each other. Um, and you're going to be using your phones and your devices to control this course. So <clears throat> recording recorded lessons, um, what do we put in them? It's all the course content, the inputs that you need to have in my PowerPoints, which I do upload. There might be videos, readings, online activities, and there are quite a few um, notes and information that are also upload. Who does it? <laughs> you do it independently. You've got to work through everything. Where do you do it? You get all your things through Canvas on your home pages and your quick links. And you can do it anywhere at college, at home, in your car, at Starbucks, um, anytime, day or night. Um, so the choice is yours when you choose to do it. There you are, there's your um, week one. And as you can see, there's a little introduction to what's going to happen in week one. It's all about the mentee survey, the, the can recordings. Um, I will be uploading this link in here. TFS um, introduction and welcome. There's still 2022 that year, but I'll be uploading the 2023 one this afternoon. There you can see the Kahoot quiz. It's going to be completed by the, the 8th of August. And there's your pre prescribed text also indicated from Ferreira. So all your information is here that you need. Just have to click on Quick Links 1 this time. Okay, and there's your Kahoot quiz waiting for you. So do you have to do these recorded classes, really? Yes, you have to do it. Um, you need this lecture information and content. You, and I know some students have told me they never watch one recording, and I just don't know how you can manage to do the assignments or understand what's going on if you don't listen to the recordings. You use this information that I give you in your Canvas online tracking event. If you can't, if you're not following the recording, you can't actually get a good mark for your online tracking, and you'll have to watch the SS overviews to know what's going on in your assignments. You can't not look at them. You have to watch them. Um, there are PowerPoints too. So if you're bored of listening to recorded things, go and read the, the PowerPoints. If you don't do it, you will not be able to complete your tasks effectively and efficiently, as well as the assignments and the on-tracking um, activities. And then you mustn't say, why am I getting this mark? Because you actually need to watch what, what's going on and look at the PowerPoints. So the Zoom face-to-face -face classes will happen three times. You must say each of them is going to be an SS1, 2, and 3 overview. So there's no more formal lectures. Isn't that nice? Um, you can access your course content uh, from the Zoom class. Um, then you can practice it. You can apply it. And you can extend it into your assignments, into your work, into your online trackers, um, and for your own benefits as well. So you can have no more boring blah, blah, blah lectures. You've got to come and listen to me. You can get it all and fast forward when you need to. You can come back when you want to. Um, it's all here for you recorded. And this will be my first one that you can see we're going to have. Um, this is your semester two, week one. Um, this one will look like the, stress, the teaching language structure and use in the home language and FAL classroom. That's going to be your first official lecture. It's not your opening lecture like I'm doing now. That'll be your first actual lecture in week one. 
Right, so you're also going to have your online tutorials on Canvas. Um, there's one of those, but the rest of the online trackers. Um, there's also going to be a forum discussion in week three as well on CLT. Again, bringing that into the language structure. Why do we do these? Because they extend the content from the Canned and Zoom face-to-face -face classes. They also, the, the, the recordings also give you support before your SS1, 2, and 3 assignments, which you really need. Where do you get it? Of course, on Canvas and anywhere where there's Wi-Fi, internet, you've got data you can access. When can you do it? Anytime you choose. Um, you'll know last semester we did the, the monkey survey, survey monkey, sorry, I get this mixed up all the time. And this is what you'll see. Most of the people said they do it at any time convenient to them. All right. Um, they also said, um, when do you listen to it? usually after the face-to-face. -face. So many of these leaves learners do not, students do not do it with the face-to-face, -face. they do it after, and that's fine. You can see um, only about 35% do it in real time. They listen to it. Um, <coughs> excuse me, um, during the, my SS1, 2, and 3 face-to-faces, I really like it. If you did try and listen in, because that's me speaking about it, and you could ask questions as well. Okay. Yeah, so watch that time. That's one thing about working on Canvas and as a distance learner, you've got to be a good time manager and you've got to slot in and you've got to keep up. Otherwise, the work's just going to become overwhelming. How will distance learning help you? Okay, yeah, it'll help you to become more flexible because you can learn when you want to, day or night. Um, how you learn is going to change you. You can do all your classes at once or your, your tasks at once or you can break it up however it suits you. Um, you can have less class hours to worry about. You've got a Zoom face-to-face -face three times a semester. You've got your recorded lessons, um, canned lessons will come in most weeks. You can have a recorded um, class with me with a PowerPoint that goes with it. And in those three weeks, you will have online trackers. Um, we're not giving you online trackers every week anymore. There's only five that are going to count towards your participation mark. And you can choose when and where you're going to do it. And this is going to make you a better graduate. Yes, set for the workplace. Um, you're going to become independent. You can work by yourself and do things individually, not procrastinating. You're going to be active learner because you're going to have to do it. I'm not going to have to pour it down your throat. And you're going to become very responsible in all of this. Um, and that always leads to success wherever you go, whether it's in the schools or you're going to work in the workplace or you do administrative work, um, you'll be successful then. So are distance learning courses easier? Unfortunately, they're not. Okay. Um, but they are very different, they're not easier, but they have the same course learning outcomes and assessments you would have if you were a content class. Um, but to be successful as a distance learner, you need to be responsible. Okay, as I said, yes, you're going to have to do online activities on time because it's the 8th of August and the de deadline is closing at midnight. It closes mm -hmm. at midnight. Middle, um, middle. Uh, Canvas doesn't stay open for you. It'll actually close, all right? So you've got to do your, your assignments and your online tutorials on time. Um, even the mentee closes on the 8th and if the, the, the Kahoot quiz closes on the 8th, they close, they're finished. You can't keep on doing them. Um, it's also responsible to participate in the Zoom face-to-face -face classes, especially when we have our... Um, industry expert coming in it's very nice to listen and talk and ask questions within that space you're going to have to do this in the workplace one day and then also actively look for support in online tutorials so if you are really backing to come to me look for support say can you check my can you check this draft for me not the day before you or the day of the submission but speak to me and ask me to check if you're on the right track yes you're going to become independent okay not dependent on everyone else but not yourself um, you're going to manage your time. You're going to check your emails, your notifications, your announcements from your lecturer regularly. So you're going to have to be responsible to do that as well. You will not see me in the classroom or in my office. You have to depend on those announcements coming from me. Um, if you have a look at what the, the Survey Monkey also said, is what do they prefer from the best to the worst in what we're doing? And most people like the Canvas access. Look at that. It's about it's just over 75%. And they also like the canned and the recorded, pre-recorded sessions. And that was also about 70%. Um, What's up, buddies? They actually scored quite a low mark. It was 45. 
as well as the, the Zoom sessions. Um, seems like you didn't really mind this on 60%, the online tasks and the email interaction. So a typical week might look like this. This is for the whole semester. You see it goes to week 12, 24th of October. All the yellows are the canned sessions. So you can see most weeks they're going to be canned um, recordings. It's all the yellow sessions. You'll see there are only three um, face to face, and that means are oh, these are the three SS one, two, and three overviews that I will be providing. Um, and there's one Moodle section on the twenty second of August where you're going to look at um, assessing language structures and use and how we're going to assess grammar things. That'll be no recording that week. You're going to be actually working through a task. And all of this combined gives us semester two based on the three units, um, grammar teaching, writing, and critical language structures and, and writing exams. So what about the assessments? Those are the most important things. Well, as you can see, um, the first one comes up on the 22nd and 24th of August, and it's our contextualized grammar assessment. For this assessment, it's already um, uploaded for you um, on Canvas in week one, where you're going to have to go look for something topical, um, AI, load shedding, water crisis, whatever you want to, something that's topical in 2023, you go and find an article, and the whole contextualized grammar assessment will be based on that. So it's going to be original 2023 stuff. Then you can see that counts 25% of your weighting. And um, then your process writing presentation is your second um, SS2, which is 30%. That's the 20, exactly a month later, 22nd and 24th of September. And you're going to end off with unit three, the paper one, two, paper three, examination setting and memo. That's 35%. And then your online tracking tasks, which includes weeks one, three, five, six, and nine, counts your 10%, which gives you your 100% mark. Okay, so that's already into your um, about this module. You can go and have a look at this um, template. It's got all the, the weightings, the assignments, and an overview of what all your assignments are. And then have you been listening to me? This is your Kahoot quiz um, to find out. I'll be able to see if you've, if you've listened to what I've said during this. It's a bit different to semester two, semester one. And you have until midnight on the 8th of August to complete this introduction fun quiz. Um, click on the link in Canvas week one. You can't miss it. It'll be there. And you can go and answer this quick question, 10 questions, um, true, false, multiple choice. And just remember, the quicker you are and the faster you are, the higher your mark. Okay. So, wishing you all a successful semester too. Happy new semester. Here we go. And just remember, there's no elevator to success. Unfortunately, I wish there were. You have to take the stairs. Okay. So, it's always hard and it's uphill um, to get there, but it's always well worth it when you are at the top. So, wishing you all a fabulous semester two. I'm um, hoping I'm going to chat to a few of you in the next coming weeks. Um, and I just want everything for the best for you. So stay warm, stay safe. And um, we'll chat again in the next week because your semester one, semester two, sorry, week one um, lecture still has to be uploaded as a canned recording. So bye for now. And we'll chat soon. Over a night. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to get out of this. Doesn't seem to let me out. Okay. You can go off. Okay. Stop share. Ended off. Here I'm going out. Bye for now. It was a bit of a blonde moment.